All right, in this video, we're going to talk about solving linear inequalities. And recall an inequality is just something that has less than, greater than, less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to in there, instead of an equation, or equal sign, rather. The only thing, well, the good thing about solving linear inequalities is you solve them the exact same way that you do linear equations. So if you've forgotten that, I've got a video on my website. Take a look at those. Um, the only, there's only one little rule you have to remember, and that's if you multiply or divide by a negative number, you have to flip the inequality. So for example, suppose I wanted to solve x plus 5 greater than or equal to 8. Well, again, I want to get the x by itself, so I can just subtract 5 from both sides. Well, it cancels on the left, and I get x greater than or equal to 3, and that'll be my solution set. It says if you plug any number greater than or equal to 3 onto the left side, notice you will, in fact, get something that's greater than or equal to 8. Suppose it was negative x plus 5 greater than or equal to 8. Well, again, the same way, I'm going to get the x by itself by subtracting 5 from both sides. And I'll get negative x greater than or equal to 3. And you can think about the negative as just being a negative 1. But in this case, when I divide by the negative 1 on both sides, this is the rule. Again, if you multiply or divide by a negative number, the inequality is going to flip signs. So instead of being greater than or equal to, it's going to turn into a less than or equal to. But the negatives cancel, and I've got x less than or equal to negative 3, and that's going to be my solution. So that's the only rule you really have to remember. If you multiply or divide by a negative number, flip the inequality. <clears throat> so let's do a couple more examples. Suppose I have 2x plus 5 less than or equal to 3 times 5 minus x. See if I can squeeze all this in here. So again, the first basic idea, I'm going to get rid of the parentheses. 2x, when I distribute, 2 times 5 is 10. 3 times 5 will be 15. 3 times negative x will be negative 3x. And again, I'm going to get my x's on the same side. So in this case, I'm going to add 3x to both sides. That way, I'll only have positive x's to deal with. So 2x plus 3x, that'll give me 5x plus 10, less than or equal to. And again, I've canceled out the negative 3x with the positive 3x. But the 15 is still hanging out. So then I'm going to subtract 10 from both sides. Again, my goal, I'm trying to get the x terms by themselves on one side of the equation, minus 10. The 5x will drop right down. The 10s will cancel out. I'll have 5x less than or equal to 5. To get the 5 by its, excuse me, to get the x by itself, since I'm multiplying by 5, I'll divide both sides by 5. And here I'm dividing by a positive number, so the inequality will not change signs. It says 5 over 5 is 1. So it says if you take any number less than or equal to 1 and plug it into this original equation, you will get something on the left side that is less than or equal to something on the right side. Okay. Let's do maybe maybe one more of these. And this is the thing. Um, solving linear inequalities is just like solving linear equations. When you move on, solving, for example, a quadratic inequality is not going to be the same as solving a quadratic equation. So this general rule only works for linear inequalities. So one thing to be careful about. Okay, so suppose I have 2, 3 minus x, plus 4, x minus 8, 
less than 3x plus 5. All right, so kind of a long inequality. But again, the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of my parentheses by, mul by distributing. So 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times negative x is going to give me negative 2x. Then I'll take my 4 times x, my pos positive 4 times x. I'll get plus 4x. Plus 4 times negative 8 is negative 32. There's not really much to simplify on the right hand side. Okay, you know, now there's a bunch of ways you could kind of start simplifying. I'm going to combine my like terms. So I see an x and an x, and the sign in front of it goes with it. So I see a negative 2x plus 4x. Well, negative 2 plus 4 is positive 2x. And then I see a 6 and a minus 32. 6 minus 32 is negative 26. And again, negative 2 plus 4, that's a positive 2x. Still nothing's going on on the right hand side. I'm going to get my x's on the same side. Suppose I, I move them to the left by subtracting 3x. Subtracting 3x. So the negative 26 is still on the left side. Positive 2x minus 3x will give me negative 1, which we don't typically write, x. <clears throat> and then that's going to be less than positive 5. And now, again, I'm trying to get the x by itself, so I'll add 26 to both sides. And I'm left with negative x on the left side. 5 plus 26 is 31. And again, you could think about negative x as being negative 1x. So if I divide both sides by negative 1, I'll get x. But here I have to be careful. I'm dividing by a negative number. The inequality flips. And 31 divided by negative 1, well, a positive over a negative is a negative. 31 over 1 is just 31 and that will be my solution. So again, one more time, solving inequalities, linear inequalities at least, are just like solving linear equations. Um, just remember to multiply, or when you multiply or divide by a negative number that you have to flip that inequality. Um, if you're just a little rusty on basic, you know, kind of solving linear equations in the first place, um, you can visit my website justmathtutoring.com. There should be a link on the right hand side of this video that will take you there. At the bottom of, uh, at least at the time of me doing this, at the bottom um, there are some algebra topics and one of the videos is solving linear equations. So you can get some more practice on solving linear equations which again will tie into solving linear inequalities. Um, on those videos. So again, I hope these examples make some sense and good luck.